off to see the Supra and check on the progress. Let's hope things are moving forward. Confession, I hate cleaning my own cars. That's why I love Adams polishes. Whatever you want to clean, polish, or shine, Adams has a specific product just for that, even for matte finishes. Since 2000, Adams polishes has been offering premium car care products dedicated to the enthusiast. Whether you're a professional detailer or a weekend warrior, their innovative and effective products will enable you to achieve amazing results on your prized possession. Adams, made with pride and passion in the USA. Last time I saw one of these, it was in my rear view mirror. <laughs> oh, yeah, 81. And, and getting smaller. They only done, had a top speed of like 115 miles an hour. Those are rookie numbers, son. <laughs> oh, there, okay, here we go. So, so it's completely stripped. I see you got everything out of it. Uh, we, we stripped the interior out. So we've got your door panels. We've got the doors, or the door panels and the uh, front seats uh, ready to get the upholstery work done. And I guess you have an appointment for that coming up, don't yep, you? Yep, next week, next okay. Friday, so. Did your car have a back seat? Uh, I talked about this a little bit before. But okay. The back seat was completely removed. There was a panel crafted here, mm -hmm. following the natural line here, and it went up. And it was a uh, what do you call this? It's particle board. It's about that much thickness. Like the MDF, maybe? Or uh, I don't know if they called it MDF. Hardboard. I don't know what they call it. Forget the term for it. <laughs> Regardless, it was it had an oval, an oblong shape cut out, mm -hmm. and then a white satin finish. Uh, panel that housed two image dynamic uh, 10 or 12 inch woofers. I think there were tens as I recall. And then, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the LED lighting, the, 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 it wasn't even LED, it was actual neon that went around the block. Oh wow, yeah, real so, neon. Yeah, and then it stepped up to the shelf. Mm -hmm. Up here, there were, this is where the stereo system started. You had your two nitrous bottles, which are put in here, strategically placed so that the target top would still fit in the factory brackets. Oh, I didn't know The that. whole thing was built didn't around know. that. Yeah, because yeah. it still had the tabs in the back for the receptacle. Sweet. For the target top, so yeah. you could drive it without the with, uh, with yeah, without yeah. having to leave the target at home. There was a stack here that was originally just a VCR and then a TV pod on top that was custom. Did you just say VCR? VCR. Listen, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> As in video cassette recorder. <laughs> They're making fun of my age. <laughs> this is before DVD was in cart. That was, just, I would live through that, but it was just going from, uh, you know, VHS to DVD. Like I know VHS when, and beta. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you probably read about it or saw it in a museum, but. He's not too much younger. Okay. He's just a little younger. Than Good jeans, bad jeans, yeah. anyway. But the movie that I used to play in the back of that thing was Top Gun, right? Until Sweet. Fast and Furious came out. To get DVD, of, well, I actually had a PlayStation 1 hooked up to the front TV right there. Did you? Yeah, and then in the back, when PlayStation 2 That's came cool. out, it had DVD capability. So then we made that stack taller, moved the TV up a little bit, and put a PlayStation 2 in there so we could run DVD. And then by that time, I was playing Fast and Furious DVD. That's right on. Do you have pictures of all that? I do. I have lots of pictures. Oh, awesome. Yeah, because I looked online and I couldn't find anything I like from the, the front facing back. Yeah, I can find all this view. I have pictures of this stuff. They're mm -hmm. not, remember cameras sucked back then. Yeah. There was a little, like one megapixel, little point and shoot, little <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. And the first digital camera came around about the time we started filming Too Fast, Too Furious, more or less. But I was there. I still have the drawings. Oh, you do? Okay, yes. sweet. sweet. And the guy who built the system, Dwayne Uita from Auto, Audio Options, is a friend of mine on Facebook. Oh, nice. And he probably would, won't remember any no, of that stuff. He probably but, would. But, you know, as long as you have the drawings, that's fantastic. The, and then when, we, when they take this thing to the audio shop, I'm going to have to be there, like, mapping it out for him. Especially Pretty that, much. That, that's the, the, the finish that we had in this tray, it's like fiberglass, like gel coat, right? Like what you put on a boat yeah. kind of thing but it was a satin finish. And when you ran your hand across it, it was like butter soft. Oh, wow. And there was no clear coat on it that I could see. It was just gel coat and sanded to a nice, smooth, supple finish. Was it lit underneath? Well, what happened was, let me, let me see if I can map this out for you. Imagine this, you've got, this is the cover board, okay? Right. Yeah. Okay. And then you cut a hole in the cover board um, for the, for the uh, amp tray, okay? Right. And be between that was sandwiched between that and the bottom was a thick piece of perspex, you know, uh, like plexiglass that was probably half an inch. Got it. Jeez. Okay. And it went around, so it was probably cut like this. They cut it like this and left a hole in the middle, and then they put neon lights behind it so it came through this way. 
Oh, nice. Oh, wow. okay. okay. That's cool. So Little that's fiber that's, optic effect thing, like I, I guess, from but the sides. it was just a soft, subtle glow. Yeah. It wasn't bright. You couldn't see any bulbs. It was very, very, very well done. Did you have any lighting um, pointed at the NOS bottles? No. Okay. This car did, never had neon lights except a couple of tubes I put in post movie for uh, showing at car shows at Haunted Port Nights kind of stuff because we were doing that for sponsors. Got it. We uh, pulled the seat belts out. I was going to ask you, what did you have your factory seat belts in your car still? The factory seat belts were still in the car, but there were there were Sparco harnesses, the three saw, inch yeah. three inch black belts with the uh, that had a fade blue logo on it. This floor, when we built this, so the the tray for the for the amps was here, right? Right. It's in this hole. Okay. I do not remember what they did with this. I don't know if this was still here. I would imagine it would be. It seems like it'd be a lot of work to cut that out. But anyway, the amp, one amp was angled up like this and the other two were angled like this. Right. And we'll have to refer to the pictures to get the angles right. But the, the, the tail will be mounting the target top to the tabs and there and having everything fit and snap in correctly. Mm -hmm. That'll be the tail. But so you had a board that was shaped like this, okay? And then it came forward here with a little angled top, like a little lid you pull off with a snap. You know how you put speaker grills on those old speakers? Yeah, like you had, yeah. it would have those two of those tabs you okay. pop in, and it was made out of vinyl. And inside that was a, a small marine gel cell battery. Oh. Oh, I thought that's where you kept your stash in the little no, hidden no. pocket. <laughs> My stash would be Boca <laughs> Frappuccino. I never did the drug stuff. I'm too busy spending money on cars and girls. Yeah. You know, hookers are expensive as it turns out. <laughs> Even back then. <laughs> well, they, were, they charge them by the pound, so it cost me a lot. Anyway, you get the battery right in there. And I don't remember what that was, so I'm going to have to talk to Dwayne about that. Yeah, you needed multiple batteries back then. Yeah. So, because I don't even remember if there was an option for a high voltage or a high output alternator back then. So what, what kind of else can I tell you about? And that same LED light, I mean, that uh, neon light that we had around here, was uh, around the speakers as well, as well the two 10-inch uh, image dynamic speakers that were mounted right. there. I remember, yep. I and remember so, the pics. Yes. So the subs fired up or fired forward? Fired up. Fired up, okay. Base is non-directional, it just goes anywhere, mm -hmm. as you know, and then tweet, mids and tweets go wherever they're pointed. And the little box that held the uh, VCR and the monitor, was that handmade? Yeah, there's nobody. And do you have the, the plans for that still? Well, it's the plans, I can draw it up for you, but the specs will be predicated upon the width and the, the dimensions of the VCR. And we have the we have the VCR, have the VCR and coming, the monitor. And the monitor. We already have the monitor. Right. I think what I will have to draw, well, I have the drawing of the top okay. of that thing because it was specially crafted. So it was, you got a pen somewhere? Oh God, good luck in here. Anyway, I have the drawings. I put my hands on them this weekend. Okay. Well, that'll come in handy. You know, our next step moving forward from here is just, you know, you've been really great in getting all of these original gauges together. You and Alex, I know, have been working like crazy on what, that. What's funny about it is now it's gone full circle because Dave DeShane, the guy who sent us his car, was yeah. two summers ago, yep. who was building a replica, calling me for all the parts and all that kind of stuff. Now we're calling him because he overbought some stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. He has extra piece of parts, so we're getting stuff from him. So now. When we get down to the nitty gritty, we really have to decide now that we know what's available and what's not available, is just how far we can deviate from the actual original car. I mean, for starters, I think you saw the comments on YouTube. Yep, people we've been were, them. were yeah. objecting to the fact that the car now had uh, an engine bay that was orange when it was not orange. The thing about that is, as you pointed out, we never saw it in the movie. Right. There was a scene though when they were inside the engine bay when they were, there was no motor in it. Right. And Dominic oh. was there and, uh, and Paul was there. And as I recall, I know it wasn't orange. Mm -hmm. I know it wasn't orange. I don't know if it was red or black because the car that we're supposed to be working on was a red car that came off the truck, but was actually a different car in real life. Two different cars, uh -huh. that car yeah. and the car, the right. car and the tow truck and the other car. What people don't understand is that nobody thought this movie was gonna take off, okay? <laughs> So when I rented my car to Universal, I said, okay, you can paint it any color you want because you're gonna pay to put it back the way it was before. Yeah. And I had every intention of putting the car back to yellow, which is why the rear speaker grills stayed yellow and it's why the roll cage stayed yellow. And I think I've covered this, right? Yeah. yeah. But after the movie came out, I was doing paid appearances with the car and all that kind of stuff. crazy. It was a big amount of money that I was getting paid to show this car around. The other thing was, I didn't want to change very much about the car. I changed the headlights and the marker lights for the updated version, you know, S2s, and the same thing with the tail lights, so it doesn't look the same as it did in the movie. So that was after the movie, after you did the, the lighting movie, and, changes. Right. And, okay, and, that makes sense now. Okay, 
And the other thing was magazines started shooting it after the movie had already been in production. But between that period of, of summer 2000 and summer 2001 when it came out, the car had been shot for uh, like 15 different magazines all over the world. Wow. I have, yeah. I, I have a whole rack of those things. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to change it the way I want. If I was going to do this and drive this bloody thing around with the nuclear gladiator on the side of the car, <laughs> I at least wanted the good stuff. And again, I had the intention of painting it back to yellow when I was done. Didn't work out that way. I decided to sell the car. It's a whole different story. Yeah. yeah. So what do we do? Do we, we do the speaker panels in, in yellow and back? I'm inclined to say that we I say we do. I mean, because, you know, what I've done, and it's funny, that, that scene that you just mentioned about uh, where, you know, uh, Brian and, and Don were looking uh, in the engine bay. They were sitting in the engine yeah, bay. Yeah, they were I kind of sitting that. in the engine yeah. bay. I, um, I want to say it was red. I want to say it was that dark red, but now now you got me thinking. We're going to go watch but, it. But um, I didn't, you couldn't see the actual. But I, you know it was an orange. That's for it damn definitely sure. Was an orange. It definitely was an orange. But um, again, you never saw the end product. You never saw the car sitting there with a, with a turbo and a 2J sitting in it. You and, just and, never saw it. And that's a continuity thing. So it doesn't yeah. matter to the, to the script so they didn't show it. it uh, understood. Right. Yeah. And it was never orange anyway. So and what, you talked about it. And what got me to say, let's just do it orange is because, you know, when we build a car like this, if this were my personal car, it'd exactly. be and if and, I, and Exactly. If I had kept the car and kept it as a movie car, the motor absolutely was going to come out of the car, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the, this thing would have been painted orange. Yeah. And back then, nobody would give two about it, right? No. They don't care if it's orange or blocked out. But no. now trying to be really accurate. I mean, if you take a look at some of the DeLoreans that have been built from Back to the Future, yeah. these, these supposedly replica cars, they're way off. There's other things. Remember we were talking about Yokohama tires, right. AVS tires, Yokohama yep. AVS uh, S tires back in the days. They had a very distinct V-shaped pattern. They don't v exist. They don't exist. No we way. actually spoke to Yokohama directly, yep. right? Yeah. So, and they said they don't make that tire anymore. So what do you do? I'm pretty sure my original hero car in the Netherlands is still riding on the fact on, the, on those tires. Oh dear. So, which <laughs> makes me very scared because yeah. they're 20 years old. And let, yeah. let us not forget yeah. that Paul, the Paul Walker answer was partially attributable to having cold yeah. tires and old tires. Yep. Yeah. So we can't get that tire. We can get the same sizes. We have the same wheels, and yeah. we're going to build them the same. We're going to change the wheel offsets to the right spec. Mm -hmm. So that'll be right. But what about the brakes? They don't make the AP no, still in caliper. AP brakes are everywhere. You can still get them in black, but what you can't get is the AP still in version, which has a trough, an embossed trough on the caliper where a little metal uh, sticker goes in there. It's made from metal. It's like a badge you would stick on the side of a car. And it says six and still in. Yep. Okay? That's what it says. Yeah. They don't make those calipers anymore. I've been looking. Dave to Shane looked for five years to find a set. And the first set he put on the car wasn't the right one. It was close. It was close. It was very close. 99% of people would not know, but it's not the exact one. It's actually better, but it's not the same one. Right. So what do we do? Drive a car around with no brakes? Yeah. I mean, you can't make it 100%. And, and, and those brakes you just talked of? Mm -hmm. We now own them. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the brakes that are going to be going on this. The ones that are 99% right. there. Yeah. And they're, they look they look the part. We're going to clean them up and paint sure. them and make them the look proper look color. It's more like that right. color. You know what? Okay. I don't have to tell you. No. Make them look brand new again. Yeah. Um, but that's ex it, but it's there's nice a lot of to considerations. You know, and it, the, there truly is. And, and there's a lot of other things as well. We, we, we talked about this ad nauseum, but. The original car was running on a bunch of HKS piggyback devices, right? You got the right. the uh, the GCC graphic control computer, you got a VPZ vane pressure converter, uh, the IPM uh, injection something 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 program something uh, management or something like that, and then well, yeah, another yeah. box. So there's one, two, three different boxes on here plus an FCON. Uh, so. so, I mean, visually, it's going to look very, very much like the movie car. You won't. It's going to really take you to dissect the two images, still images of the scene used car mm -hmm. compared to this car. I think it's going to be really hard to tell them apart. Yeah. And again, you know? the, there's certain things that compromises that I have to make in my own head. Right. I really don't want to drive around uh, the Supra with the chrome headlights on it. That was a challenge, you know, because the ones that we have and the ones that we found, the US spec ones, the chrome bezel ones. Yeah. They're, they've been discontinued for years yeah. and the ones that are available used are 
junk. Nobody wants the reconditioning because you're putting new chrome on old plastic inside of a bezel that's going to get super hot because it's basically an oven, right? Right. Yeah, yeah it's it an oven in, in the there. sun. Yeah. UV protection yeah. and all so, of that. So our plan B is the Euro Specs. You can still buy them there. There's a few pair left floating around. Only difference has a glass lens. You know what? But that's that 99% thing. Well, and then you put, uh, you know, that clear tape over it, that clear protector film over it, yeah. right, to help knock down the UV and prevent yeah. rock chips because yeah. that thing will get foobarred quickly driving Big that Big time. Big time. Right. People say, well, it's not accurate because it's got this on it and it doesn't, but it looks the same, <laughs> but it's not exactly accurate. Right. So there's just a lot of things you're not going to be able to get anymore. I mean, Dave Jesko, who helped with the build originally, who came to our sh your shop. Got it. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Remember yep. when we're looking at Dave's car? Yep. He, he, Toyota he, he's been working for yeah. Toyota for 25 years years yeah. he has the master parts system globally at his fingertips okay he can tell us what's available he can tell us what's available around the world around the world anywhere that's in a sweet the world connection. okay yeah so and he's a good friend of mine I've known the guy a very 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 long time and he's a smart guy I mean it, it, he just keeps texting me random thoughts from the highway hey if you want this I can get this but you're probably gonna want this because there's none of these parts left but I can find you one it's in uh, Guadalajara wow. or, or it's in Tibet yeah, 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 right yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if we need rare Toyota parts, we can probably get them if they're still floating around and still exist. Well, I, I think we mentioned to you, we were successful in getting quarter windows new, all the rubber trim that makes up the entire uh, cabin. You got this stuff? Yep. Brand new. You got this stuff? Brand new. Yep. This stuff? Brand new. Yes, sir. You, did, it, did it arrive yet? Yeah. I think a lot of people don't believe they have any of that. Brand new. We got them all. I, got I think a lot of people are going to want to see that. Yeah. Because no, we got it. Brand new in the Toyota boxes. We were excited I about I believe that. you, but I think there's step skeptics on the internet. We also got the rubber surround for the back hatch window too. So just to, just to kind of recap on the lights, so you know, we do have the brand spanking new later model headlights. Yes, yeah. and so, taillights. And taillights. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because there was some, I, I remember we, we got called out on a, few, on a few guys saying that, you know, originally when we talked about how the car sat on the movie, mm -hmm. it had the black tail lights on it, or the gray tail lights, I think is what you yeah. said originally, yeah. right? Yeah, I probably did. And then what, what happened? You it, we went online yeah. and, and we did an image search of the movie, yeah. you know, fan websites, right. and they were You should go to my black. website, fastandfuriousfacts.com. Black. <laughs> black, black bezel tail lights. I like yeah. to think that so that put that website up for some We day. got lucky and we found a set of pearl used ones See, i mean yeah it's, that's my fault completely yeah, and here's yeah. why the mm -hmm. the the period of time from the car when i got the car back mm -hmm. i got it remember i got that car back in probably september of 2000 we were done filming late september ish maybe yeah. october mm -hmm. and immediately i said about starting changing stuff like i said the headlights the right. side markers all that kind of stuff i changed the seats out at one point i put oh, these you did? i did oh. i had these big high shell sparco seats I have pictures of the car with that. Oh, okay. So these, this, this racing bucket kind of thing. The roll cage got paint or got chromed instead of uh, the yellow. There's a bunch of other small changes that I made, but it happened so fast because right after that, I was going to shows. It was being rented from movie theaters and, and showrooms. Mm -hmm. And then it was going to magazines. Uh, people came over here from the Max Power people came to Southern California State at my house for a week. Oh, no way. And they, yeah, they That's shot cool. a DVD called Max Power uh, Way Out West, mm -hmm. which I just downloaded. They have the original files on the internet today. Nice. So there's a feature of all the movie cars on that DVD, but it's not also down, uh, available for download. Yep. Anyway, a yeah. lot of stuff got changed very quickly in rapid yeah. succession. And then all the pictures that you see in the different magazines, I even found going through my magazines that there were pictures of the car when it was in this condition and it had this equipment. And then a month later, the next issue had the car with some other stuff like the different seats and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the way it goes. I mean, you know, like you said from the very beginning, who would have ever thought this would have, this was gonna be as huge as yeah. it become, you know, this franchise. I didn't, we didn't. And, uh, but what's nice is, is that we're gonna be able to provide you with both sets of taillights and, and I think it's cool that you still had the bug even after the movie was becoming a success, right? Still wanted to make the car yours. You know, I'm changing the headlights, I'm changing the markers, because I'm changing I, this. Because I was stupid. <laughs> because no, really, honestly, honestly, yeah. you don't, Daryl will tell you, he's been doing this a long time, you yeah. don't change a movie car. You yeah. put it in a time capsule and hope that'll be worth some money someday. Mm -hmm. You don't bloody change it. Well, you it was worth it. some money for you. Well, yeah. it was worth some money, but that car today. What's that car today? 
Well, the, the stunt car that got reused right. for Too Fast, Too Furious, which was an automatic non-turbo car, but right. a T-top, and it didn't have any of the, it, it wasn't even a, a replica, no. really. No, it wasn't. But it was a screen-used car. Right. Yeah. It wasn't good enough to be a replica, but it was a screen-used car, so that car sold for exactly what I predicted. I probably said that car is going to go for 550 You did. You hit it right on the head. And, then, and so that makes your and car. And I guessed. <laughs> that, that's got to make your car 1.5. Your original my, car, my, minimum. The story I heard is that the guy who owns the car had turned down offers of 1.5 as recently as 2017. Yeah, what wouldn't surprise me. I know the Fast and Four, my old Bayside Blue car, Skyline GTR, the one that in the fourth installment. Uh, Peter's car. Peter's mm -hmm. car. He's turned down. He's turned down 1.5 on that yeah. car. Yeah, that's a seven-figure car now. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, who would have known? Right? I don't know. There's only one other uh, Supra on the West Coast. It belongs to Hollywood Supra on Instagram. You got to check him out. His name is uh, Juan Cozacart. Nice guy. I'd be curious to think uh, to, to see what people think about that particular car. I mean, it's it's not really a replica f to some people, and it's a tribute to some people. But Why if not? you what, what makes well, it well, just a little differences. Like he had like chrome windshield wipers. He had an A pillar with three gauges oh. over here, three over there. The valve cover was painted candy orange. Just got a bunch of differences. The car's jacked up in the back for whatever reason. I think it was. So yeah. this wasn't a screen car. No, no, this no, was just, no, this no, is no. just okay. a, a okay. But what's replica. funny is just he and like I got well to be done. friends. Yeah. The first time I saw that car was like 2006 and it was driving in uh, Pacific Coast Highway in Laguna Beach. And I was like, holy shit, somebody built a replica? I lost $20 on that bet. Because RJ Devera, who was the other technical advisor, people keep forgetting that RJ was a technical advisor too. Yeah. We, we used to say, oh my God, these these graphics are so bloody ugly. At least we know nobody's ever going to copy them. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. How many sets do you oh, think God. have been made of those? I had RJ in my studio about a year and a half ago and we were laughing about that. That's funny. I've, I've learned that if you put anything on film or yeah. attach it to a celebrity no matter how ridiculous it is yep. it's cool yeah <laughs> it so is. this what makes this is what makes the hollywood producers way smarter than i am yeah because well and it's they funny know that. because there's a there's a set of collectors that aren't into cars that are just into the 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 aspect of it being a movie george barris i'm releasing a video tomorrow about how george barris almost bought my car oh no way I tried wow. to buy this car he did buy two of the cars as a matter of fact what would he have done with it, you think? I know exactly what he would do with it because he, he took a bunch of wire loom from the Home Depot aisle. I know what you're talking okay, about. Okay, started running, th started zip tying sh to shit. He went out and bought these, uh, you know, those fake carbon fiber da da gauge pods that are supposed to go here. Yeah. He glued them to the top of the dash, right, and put fake gauges in there. Then he put it, took a wall switch that you use to press buttons, you know, yeah. a cover plate yeah, that yeah, you put on right. a switch box. <laughs> He screwed it to the dash, and you know why those red wire caps that you tie wires together, electrical wires, put six of those sticking out. I'm like, what <laughs> in the wide, wide world of redneck bullshit, <laughs> Mickey Mouse rigging <laughs> shit did this guy just do? The pictures I'm going to show in the video tomorrow are going to oh, wake up. I can't wait people. to see it. Yeah. It'll be cool. But yeah, he wanted to buy the car after it was on eBay, and uh, the bid bidding went up to almost 180 grand, and then he wanted to buy it for 40 grand. I already, bought, already had a buyer in, in Europe. Wait, did one. you put yours on eBay? I did. I didn't know that. But Shoot. there was a bunch of fraudulent bidders. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. What do you think of the engine bay? What do you think of that well, color? Well, I, I think it's great. Now, I, I understand you guys have a video. All the stuff that you've done in here, stripping all this shit down, prepping the surface and all that stuff, Everybody can find that video on your channel, Just Driven, right? Right, okay. that's right. Mm -hmm. What you're going to see in, in our video is obviously this content here, but also the, the stripping of the interior, the prepping the engine bay, the painting the engine bay, the clearing the engine bay. We're going to roll the tabs and fasteners. We have everything. Yeah. We have, mm -hmm. we, we've got everything boxed, and we're going to replace and get whatever we don't. I even started researching new decals for the sun visors, so um, I'm going oh, yeah, nice. to... I'm gonna replace everything on this car. This car is gonna get painted, Craig, with the doors off, and the doors will be hung in the booth, so there won't be any paint line going from the outer quarter to the to the inside, uh, you know, door door jam. That's cool. That's good uh, stuff. Um, you heard about the hang up with the body kit, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, everybody, I don't, you know, everyone's heard about the backlog of ships lined up in Long Beach. Um, supposedly, am I right? Mm -hmm. One of our body kits is sitting on a boat in a container that may have been sent back. So uh, what we've got yeah. is you were able to put us in touch with the gentleman. Yeah, I, and, took, your, I took your advice. I said, try to see the find, find the guy on your YouTube channel because he most posted a comment. Right. So he had a, a picture of himself as his, as his uh, avatar. Right, yes. And it said, and he had his real name, right? And, and so I looked this guy up on Facebook. I found him in like 10 seconds. <laughs> and then I DM'd him and in about 20 minutes, 
months later says, oh yeah, I got an extra one. Hang on, I'll go take some pictures. Right, yeah. And so he literally went out into his little warehouse and starting, he's in North Carolina, he's taking pictures. Here they are, this, this is, here's the authenticity uh, stamp on the yep. thing. Isn't that awesome? I said, yeah, we'll take it. How much do you want for it? We bought it. We bought it, and right? So now and, he's boxing and it up and he's, he's shipping it out up. to us. Power of social media. That's know, awesome. Right? So oh, yeah. what we're looking for right now is we need four gauges from Gretty. We need a boost gauge. We need an EGT gauge. We need, I think we have the EGT coming, right? It was on one of the builds. I'd have to check with okay. Alex. Okay, yeah. I think mm -hmm. EGT picked yeah. it up. We need yeah. an oil pressure gauge. Yeah. We have the boost gauge. Okay, so boost. So there's only four total, two on the A pillar. Uh, I'll show you where those goes, by the way. I know we have the NOS brackets. Okay, the bottle brackets, we have those. Um, so one goes here. Right, right below this uh, dimmer uh, console dimmer switch, it goes right in there. Okay. And the other one goes right up there where the clock was. Okay. So I can't remember in the movie. Did they ever show the instrumentation of the car shifting gears? I don't think so. I, I mean, it's it's like watching home movies. Every time it comes on now, I go, Oh no, I can't watch it. <laughs> I, know, I, know. Same here. I, I get that way too. What I've done is I've screen grabbed. Uh, all of the the scenes with the car being used in it just to see what I can There's capture. a 4K version online now too. I think I've seen that one. Okay. Can you clarify something? Yeah. Tachometer, right? Mm -hmm. Big old uh, auto meter, right? Mm -hmm. Tachometer mm -hmm. has an integrated shift light. Mm -hmm. And then there were two additional shift lights for a total of three shift lights? There was a yellow one attached to the auto meter tack, as you probably know, and there are two red lights. One was nitrous activation, tell me that the system was armed. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We need to clarify that so we know how to wire them up. Yeah. That's yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when the switch was armed, um, I had two switches. One was in the glove box to, to, to turn the bottle on, and the other one was uh, hooked to a micro throttle switch, but it also had a, uh, it had to be full throttle, and you had to hold the blue button down. The blue button was attached, there was a thing, a kit that nitrous oxide used to sell. And you could put the button, it was a loose button, you can put it anywhere, you could st 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 zip tie it to something, it could go around the steering wheel, so when you're going around, you know, you, no matter, you don't yeah, have to yeah, take yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. And then you just hit, the, hit that button, that's the way it was activated. Okay. So. This is gonna be functional, NOS is gonna be functional on it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I mean, that's easy to do, yeah, yeah why not? I mean, it's, what's the point of putting it in there yeah. and not having it hooked up? Lots to do, but lots getting done. So what's next, guys? Brakes get here, and then you send the wheels off. Once you do the measurements and all that, right? Okay. Uh, Yokohama's going to help us again with tires. Uh, they yep. have their new AVS V601. Yeah, that's the one you're coordinating. Yeah, with I'm, I got to okay. send an email to Frank over there at Yokohama. They're going to get us a set of tires. Awesome. For now, uh, the next step is to the body guys are going to start spending a lot of time just perfecting the body. They don't want to really jump on it until the body kit's on the ground. Sure, sure, makes so, uh, perfect sense. You know, there's going to be a lot of making that body kit beautifully. Let me um, ask you a couple of questions here. While we have this thing apart, what are we doing like to clean up this stuff? We're going to pull the sub. The sub. The frame's going to. The subframe's going to come off in its entirety. This is we're just gonna, on, so it's a roller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just reinstalled we're it. We're going to so clean it up, put it back in. We're going to clean it up. We're going to send the rack out. Uh, although Alex says the rack. The rack and pinion is really nice and tight, but okay. I'm going to send it to our guy that does our rack rebuilds. We have all new bushings ordered. Everything, mm -hmm. every bushing in this thing is going to be brand new. Uh, we were just so impressed. James and I couldn't get over it. And you'll see it on the other portion of the video where we talk about when we were prepping this engine bay. This thing has never been whacked. It's never taken a hit. This, the frame rails are super straight. Yeah, dude, we got lucky. This is a straight car. I've seen so many no of these evidence things. of an accident. Yeah, crash. In terms of the entire underbelly of this car, it's not even taking a rock or anything. Nope. Really nice, nice body to work with. Hopefully we're gonna have the uh, body kit coming here in the next few weeks. The parts are coming in. You know, we're gonna have our brakes, so then we could pre-fit the brakes. We rehang the fenders. Get and the wheel offsets right. Get the, the wheel barrels, offsets the right. right. Send the wheels out and have we them We want rebuild. those things to be right on point, man. And then, you know, with that body kit though, it's gonna be a bitch because it's not even a full over fender. So it only sticks out at the lower portion of the fender. I know, I So when that. you shoot it from this angle, front and rear. It looks weird. It looks like the tire is tucked under the, the fender, know. like an inch and a half but that's not the case it's like a mud flap it's just the yeah, way it's, it yeah. is it's a really weird effect yeah. if i had it to do today i should probably make a video about that how would i have done that car today but honestly i don't know because so much that would be a great video actually the motor's out the okay engine's out. now that the transmission we're not doing the v160 because you can't find one that's actually working why don't you talk about that the, the problem with the v160 is the First, they don't make them, right? Of course. So you find one new in a crate hidden away somewhere, you're paying 15K minimum. Which is sequential territory. And, yeah, it is. You're right, you're like, it so is. you can go with the uh, T56 kit, right? right? Which is fine, right? Yeah, but there's I a lot of, of proprietary stuff going on there. I don't even know if we have to ship everything to the company that does it, I or we it. have to wait for the parts, you know, there's this. So I've ran the CD09. 
Alex has run the CD um, 00A, right? So yeah. 009, 00A. I've never had an issue with them. Uh, there's some the people that out there complain. I've thrown six, 700 wheel horsepower at it. Well, that's what Alex No cars, problem. Uh, Alex cars Yeah, no six. problem. But a single plate clutch on a on a high horsepower Super with the V160 is a horrible experience. Terrible, horrible. right? Horrible. On horrible. off, it's a light switch, it sucks. Yep, yep. We're going with a Tilton Triple. Mm -hmm. Alex spec'd it out, because he's a wizard with that, right? Yes, yeah. And it's got light, clamp i guess or initial clamp we'll load. Initial, right. initial clamp it's got light initial clamp so it's load. got a nice set it's got pedal transfer it's, it's got travel it's not like air nothing nothing everything yeah yeah and serial nine bell housing these are all proven products right they're well, they all would, proven they products they wouldn't be making kits for this transmission no. if it wasn't a good no. transmission people there are some, putting there were some people yeah smacking the idea of us doing this transmission you know in the comments and uh you know, uh, we don't know what kind of bad experiences they've had, but we've had none of that. Most yeah. of them were from, from people missing gears, to be honest with you. Ara Arslanian, who was a super racer in Pro Comp 6, yeah. when the when Naira Series was running, he was running nine seconds back in the early 2000s. Like, when I say early 2000s, I mean 2000. Oh, with a, a standard V160 transmission. Yeah, yeah. That's so impressive. he, yeah. if you don't miss shifts, no, you can do it. Things tend not to break, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. he obviously got one built on a Monday, not a Friday. So anyway, be that as it may, it just doesn't make sense to do that. It has no functional difference. It doesn't make the car deviate from the original, really. Yeah. It's, if, if, if you got better stuff, that's still it's still true to the core concept. It's a six speed. Yep. It doesn't cost 10 grand to buy a mystery transmission. You get a used one for yep. 10 grand. You're like, does it work? Does it not work? I don't know. That's the price. You Dave pay DeShane. for it if you yep. want it. Dave DeShane's yeah. transmission. His thing was uh, was a third, fourth synchros that needed to be replaced. Yeah. And Dave Jesko, our yeah. buddy, the Toyota guy, got him the last shaft and gear setup that he had. And that, that he happened to have in a box in his garage. Whoa. Toyota didn't have any more. So he got lucky. That's cool. He got so super he lucky. He got lucky. super lucky. Yeah. yeah. Well, but those the days, ones, yeah, we'd love to put a V160 yeah. in there. Yeah. You know, hey, if somebody has a V160 out there, hit us in the comments. Absolutely. We'd like to know what you want for it and what the history of it is. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I want to clarify too, because we're getting a lot of comments on whose car is it? Is it Craig's car? Are we building it for Craig? We, this is a collaboration between both of us, Craig and I being friends. We bought this car together as a partner. Our two channels are building this car. We're both registered owners of this car, uh, just driven in, in Craig's channel. And uh, we're just doing this to showcase, you know, what's involved in building a replica car. And, and so I, I wanted to clarify that because there was a lot of people asking us and, and we were getting hit up by a lot of clients asking Such if we'd be interested interesting topic. in building uh, another one. And mm -hmm. right now uh, we've got so many builds in the queue. I'm a, I'm a police car collector guy. I love classic. I've got about nine or 10 different variety of cop cars. And, and I restore them back to original authentic condition. And, and it takes so much work and effort. Um, I can't imagine doing it. I mean, it would be easier, I will say, because we, you, the, the, you know, we're, we're out of parts. We're doing labor work, but that's the problem. That's the we have to make stuff from scratch. So we're gonna do this, have a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. And um, good, so I wanted to clarify that. The but good, it's, The good news is that this car is gonna go around the shows. We're gonna share this car with people. Yeah. So it's not the same movie car, but Hopefully, yeah. you know, the spirit of what the movie car was uh, is all going into this because of this collaboration. And we're going to try and reproduce it as faithfully as we can. So forgive us if, if it's not 100%, but we're, we're going to get as close as we can to it. So it'll be, it should be fun. So and far, we're I'll excited. be giving rides. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, and we're going to have some track days with it, too. I think that'll be the best part is to have, actually have some track fun with it. It'll be fun to go out there and learn to drift in this, in this car. You know what would be really fun, even more fun than that? Mm. If we could get you in this car with some sticky tires on the back, taking it down Irwindale, quarter mile. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. No, I'm serious. Would that be yeah. cool? That'd be have fun. Craig in the no. driver's seat yeah. when I was you know, in, ripping through gears? When I was in uh, Race Wars of Germany a couple years ago, yeah. uh, I was driving uh, this guy Benji's uh, car. He had an automatic stock twin turbo. And then the guy pulled up next to him in a charger, uh, a built charger. Oh, 68? Yeah, but I'm an old drag race yeah. guy. This dude, I leave on the second yellow, right? Yeah, right. I, I, I deep stage, right? And yeah. on a super, especially an automatic. And I get it up on the rev, so I'm power brake, and I heated the tires, you know, I pull up to the line, got a deep stage on the guy and the lights. I leave on the second yellow. He moved, I would cut a 0.002 light, and he cut a 2.63. Not, right? not 0.263, 2.63. 
two second, 2.63 seconds. He fell asleep? I don't know what he was doing, man, That's but funny. it made the super look really, really fast. And my French friend, Bendy, was, he was just screaming something in French, <laughs> which I interpreted to mean he was very, very happy. And he yeah. thinks his car is actually fast when I, actually the other car probably would have smoked him if he knew it. That's funny. Uh, when we decided we were going to do this, I started shopping for a 70 Charger. I wanted to build a black 70 Charger because I've got the, I've got a 68. Yeah. Set, I have a 70 Roadrunner up here on the rack that we're yeah. doing an SRT8 drivetrain in. And I thought, oh man, it would be so cool to do an old school 70 oh. Charger with the blower whoa, through the Whoa, 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 If we're gonna do that, we're not gonna do that shit on Orondale, but we should do it at Orondale just to see that the Supra, uh, the yeah. Supra of that day would probably not run with a 900 horsepower Charger at all. Yeah. Oh. For reality, because yeah. gotcha. they're yeah, definitive. Right. The other one yeah. is we need to go down to San Pedro where we oh, film. Oh, we gotta do that. That's right at the intersection of Tuna Street, okay? And I know exactly where it was. I was there a year ago. Nice. And pull up the two cars up there on a Sunday. Yeah. So guys, if you, anybody out there have a 70 Charger, a uh, nice body, not rusty, I don't care what motor, doesn't even have to have a drivetrain in it, hit me up. I might pull the trigger on that, because that would be fun and to do. And if you that. give us a good deal, we'll let you be there when we film the episode. That would be, that would be a <laughs> kick. That's it. Follow Just Driven, follow my channel, and yeah, uh, absolutely. make sure if you have questions, don't be afraid to make comments below. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to both channels. Mm -hmm.